Hey you! Want to start drawing digitally? Got sci but don't know where to begin? Well, this is the tutorial for you. <laughs> okay, no, but seriously though, uh, welcome to my channel. And today I'm going to do a tutorial on the basics of the illustration program, Paint to a Sci. Paint to a Sci was what introduced me to digital art, and it's the first program I used to draw, so it's very near and dear to me. <laughs> and naturally, after like five years, I also know it like the back of my hands. Um, so yeah, in this tutorial, I'm going to go over the very basics, but even if you have used this program before, still stick around. You never know, I might cover something you haven't discovered before. But otherwise, feel free to check out my second Paint to a Sci tutorial for more advanced techniques. But anyway, to begin, what is Paint to a Sci? Um, if you guys already know what this is, feel free to skip like two or three minutes into the video. If not, well, Paint to a Sci is a Japanese program made for illustrations. Um, the official English website <laughs> looks like it got permanently trapped in 2005 or something, but uh, you can still find all the information you need. Um, for example, it's 5,400 Japanese yen, which translates to around 50 US dollars, which is very, very cheap compared to Photoshop, which is like, by the way, like $700. Um, it's definitely the best program out there for the best value for what's worth considering all the functions that it offers. So uh, if you're not ready to make a purchase, you can always try the 30 day trail. But um, as for who should use it and why you should use it, Paint to a Sci, I think is like the default program for almost every artist on Pixiv. And if you don't know what Pixiv is, then man, are you missing out. Search it up. It's like uh, a Japanese DeviantArt, except <laughs> everyone's art who's on there is like, ooh, it just makes me want to like give up on life, take out Butcher's life and just cut off my hands because it's like, why do I even try? No, but seriously though. Um, <laughs> this program is mostly for artists who want to draw uh, um, anime, cartoons, I don't know, furries. Um, just anything that's not realism, in which case, uh, my personal opinion is that Photoshop is better. The good thing about Asai mostly is that it has a simple interface and all of the most important functions of Photoshop without being as confusing as Photoshop. All right, so now on to the actual program. Select file and you'll get a few options that pop down. Um, we'll start out with creating something new and a window will pop out where you can change the size of your art piece. Um, the bigger it is, the more memory it takes and the more laggy your computer gets. Um, so drawing with something around the one to two K range is safe for most people, especially beginners. But obviously this part's up to you. They have some presets here for you as well, which is pretty helpful if you want to draw it in like, I don't know, a specific paper size or something. I'm just going to select a 6. But yeah, uh, now the important part in this section is the resolution area. I generally like to go with the 300 dpi just so that your final product looks crispier and more HD. And um, yeah, just make sure to change this because I think the default is like 72 or something. So now that you've created a file, I'm going to talk about the layer panel and the color tools over on the two sides here. You can actually pick which side you want them to be on. Just um, to do that, just go to windows and down here you can choose which one of them you want on the right. So for example, if you want them to be both on the left, then you just have to uncheck both of these. Adjust this according to your own screen and what you're comfortable with. And um, while we're on this window drop down, I might as well talk a bit about the other important stuff here. So these six choices up here are pretty simple and straightforward. You can also get them to appear and disappear with these buttons up here. So the first one, color wheel, is an absolute must. Uh, this is what you use to choose your colors with. Everything else is pretty straightforward and um, you can choose which ones to show or not show depending on your screen size, um, what you can fit in there and what you prefer. I'm not going to cover all of it since it'll take too long, so just play around with it yourself and, you know, see. Uh, remember though that most of these are to help you pick a color to use. So if you want to change the color of something you already have, so um, say I put on blue here, and I want to change it to purple, uh, you would have to go up to filter, then select hue and saturation, and so. Hue is what the color, uh, what color the layer is. Uh, saturation is how colorful this color is, and luminescence is how light or dark it is. So yeah, like I said, this program is pretty simple to work with. Down here is the toolbox. Um, I've already customized quite a bit, so it doesn't really look like the default ones anymore. Uh, but this stuff up here should all be the same. 
The first two are selection tools, and the third one's a magic wand, uh, which is actually kind of a complicated function, so I might even make a separate video for it. But um, yeah, and this entire row down here is self-explanatory and kind of useless in my opinion, lol. But um, as for the brushes, I can get very complicated and also calls for a separate tutorial altogether. But basically, there's five main types, okay? There is pen, airbrush, brush, watercolor brush and marker so the pen is very solid and crisp um yeah i like to use this for sketches and lines the airbrush is very good for creating gradients and spray on a lighter layer of color like so and um, the brush the watercolor brush and the marker are generally used interchangeably for coloring and shading um the default program should also give you a blur brush somewhere over here. And basically it's like a tweaked water brush, color brush, but yeah. Uh, as the name suggests, you'll be using this to blur or blend colors together like so. Now onto the layers panel. Up here is the navigator. This is pretty helpful. Um, you can use it to zoom in or out or rotate the whole picture. But uh, you can also do the zoom in and out thing with the wheel of your mouse, which in my opinion is a lot more convenient. But uh, the most useful part of this area is the reset buttons. So say if I zoom out really far, this is a really nice way to always return back to the original full view. Um, there are a lot of functions on this column the rest of this column um, that's pretty advanced so I'll only cover the basics right now um, and I'll start with the bottom of these two lines this time this area is where all your layers are so to create a new one you click this blank page on the top left corner here and yeah um, layers are very important especially how you organize them which by the way I have a video on that <laughs> they're helpful mostly because you can separate the colors that way so for example i can have a layer for backgrounds and then another layer for the character <laughs> yeah but um yeah this looks like a child's scribble but yeah you know what i mean um <laughs> you can make a line work layer as well so notice how the toolbox changed uh, feel free to play around with it but basically this is helpful if you don't have a tablet and draw with your mouse or something since you can just click to make the lines uh, i personally only use the line tool mostly for making weapons or flat environmental things such as tables i highly do not suggest you to use this to line your artwork or people um, the problem with this is that the lines turn out rigid and really unnatural and just really unprofessional overall so yeah don't use it um, <laughs> you can also organize uh, layers into folders like so and yeah um okay let's see uh this button here on the left is for transferring what you have on the current layer to the one below without deleting the layer like this and let's undo that and this one is for completely merging the two layers and transferring it to the one below but yeah this is for erasing what's on the layer without deleting it and this is for deleting the entire layer but yeah, don't worry about this white dot thing on the top right yet, because that's quite advanced. But yeah, kudos to um, those of you who still stay with me. Uh, we're almost done. The most important parts are coming up now, actually. Um, so yeah, we're going to ignore this bottom button because these two up here are far more important. Uh, preserve opacity is pretty much just as essential to digital art as Control Z. <laughs> And basically, once you check this box, it locks what you have already put down on the page. So now, if you use a brush and draw over it, it'll stay within what you already have, which is super, super important for shading and a variety of other things. Um, yeah, and this one, the clipping group button, uh, serves almost the same purpose as preserve opacity, but not really. So um, say this layer is your base color or something. And if you make a new layer on top and then clip it, what it does is that it does the same thing as preserve opacity, except you'll be drawing on a new layer, which makes some people more comfortable since that way you won't be screwing up what you already have on the bottom. Okay, now listen up my kohais. <laughs> See this row called mode? Well, this is probably one of the most important functions inside and basically any other illustration software you'll encounter. 
I usually change the mode for clip layers because it's kind of like a cheat way to apply shade and lighting. Um, the one I use the most is multiply, which is for shading, and luminosity for lights. I'll give you a quick example of what they can do. And ta da! <laughs> um, yeah, you, you get the idea, but <laughs> basically, um, a warning though. Um, be careful to not become dependent on these because I mean they're cool to play around with and they're efficient shortcuts and I'll be a hypocrite if I say don't use it but um, if you should probably learn how to actually shave your own artistic future instead of relying on um, these mold layers but yeah that's about it I think yep yeah. yeah that's literally everything you need to know about Pink side to get started I know I sped through a lot of this, so feel free to go back and rewatch some areas, pause and try some of the stuff on your own, but overall I hope that helped. Uh, click here to watch some of my other tutorials or click here to subscribe to more. Um, make sure to give this video a thumbs up and I'll see you guys later with more tutorials and speed techniques in the future.